Okay, Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the uh, second part. Uh, okay, second video on critical and cultural theory. So, yay. Alright, more theories. So, the other day, we stopped at discussing uh, British cultural studies. Alright, so let's go to the slides. So, I think we, I have introduced you to Stuart Hall. Okay, he's Jamaican. Alright, so he changed the way, he, he did not really change, okay, he brought in new ideas into uh, cultural studies, alright. Uh, you can say that Stuart Hall was more uh, diplomatic, okay, more soft in his approach in trying to explain okay, the relationship between um, power, status quo and the audiences or the everyday people. Okay, because we've already discussed all right, critical theory. Critical theory talks about hardcore influence. Okay, or there's a very biased relationship okay, between, especially when we talk about media, media industries and the everyday people. But the cultural studies okay, coming from, especially the British cultural studies, they have a, what we call as a softer approach. Okay? So the British cultural studies, okay, they are also uh, related, okay, they were inspired by the Frankfurt School. Okay, so the Frankfurt School we've discussed, they introduced the idea of uh, cultural industries, of the idea of uh, hegemonic culture. Okay, so they brought in the idea of how influence, okay, and uh, inequalities in relationship can come via cult culture, not just via political economy. But the, the British cultural studies, they, were, they are more optimistic. Okay, because they believe the media can be a pluralistic public for public forum. That despite the power, okay, the elites or the status quo have, everyday people can still challenge that power, okay, through their everyday exp experiences. Okay? Because they take a culturalist view where they see culture is a site of social struggle and a place where change can occur. So one of the examples of a British cultural studies is the study done by Janice Redway. Okay, so Janice Redway is a feminist. Okay, so she did a study on women who likes to read romance novel. You know romance novel? Okay, maybe your mother read it, maybe you read it. Some people call it uh, chick lit. Okay, chick literature. Okay, um, of course there is some stereotypes against women who likes to read romance novel. Okay, it's typical, uh, very, uh, we call it perempuan, we like romance, we're so weak. Okay, so that is the typical stereotype when we talk about romance novel. Okay, but if we were to take a hardcore critical theory or Marxist approach towards understanding why women read romance novel, we would come up with this bias into thinking, well, women are being subjugated. Okay, women are being, you know, when you give them romance novel, they read it, they waste their time, okay, they don't understand their potential, they expect their husbands to be like the, like the heroes in the novel, in the novels that they read, okay, so they will just maintain status quo, women will be staying in the kitchen, reading novels, okay, not changing the world. But a culturalist view would say, yes, there is, there is that tendency. Okay, someone is making money out of these women reading these novels. But at the same time, we must ask those women, what are their experiences? Okay, so when Redway did the study, she found okay, that these women were empowered okay, when they read the novel. It's not just the content of the novel, but the practice of reading and sharing about the novels. When these women, especially these housewives, okay, when they read these novels, they become the feel like their time is being used wisely, okay? And, some, and she also found out that this woman had created book clubs. You know book clubs? You've heard of book clubs, right? Where they got together and they discuss about the books that they read. And when they discuss, okay, they don't just discuss about the content of the books, they discuss about their experiences, their issues. So the point is, okay, through this culturalist view, Redway, Janice Redway found out, okay, that romance novel is not that bad. Because for these women who read that, those novels, okay, they found a way to communicate, to socialize, okay, to find an, uh, a different avenue okay, to express themselves. Okay, so 
it can be also a place, okay, reading those novels can basically also challenge dominant in its assumptions. Okay, that means that women will say, eh, I love these novels, for example, I can write these novels, I too can be rich, for example, writing these novels. So when these women find another avenue, all right, they are challenging, okay, the uh, status quo. So culture is a site of social struggle, okay, that means it's not really, like we mentioned, transmissional view. Women read novels, women, no, uh, romance novel, they become weak. No, it's a ritual view. That when they read it, they experience different things. That when they read it, okay, they relate to other women. Okay, can you follow what I'm saying? So it becomes a pluralistic public forum. Public forum. Okay, now that we are here at British Cultural Studies, you can see the evolution again, all right, from Marxist, the critical theories, to a softer approach, all right, via cultural studies. Okay. So according to Raymond Williams, culture is one of the two or three most complicated words in the English language. And this couldn't be more true because how do you actually define culture? Because culture is a lot of things. Culture is practices, culture is beliefs, culture is your everyday life. Okay, so that's why, all right, according to them, cultural is ordinary. Okay, it's not revolution, revolutionary. Critical studies talk about revolution. Uh, what we call it, specific change, okay? direct change from black to white. But cultural study says it's ordinary. Okay, it's in the gray areas, it's in the everyday life. Okay. So what are the strength of, strengths of British cultural studies? Okay, they assert value to popular culture. That means reading romance novels, listening to rap music, BTS, K-pop, they all have values. All right. Uh, I may not agree with my daughter, for example, being so obsessed with K-pop, but it probably, okay, if I were to take a cultural view, okay, I would try to understand what K-pop means to her. Okay, because growing up, you know, being a teenager, I'm sure most of you growing up, you had your pop idol as well. And at the moment of in time, in this moment of time, okay, it's the K K-pop. Okay? So it empowers common people. It doesn't say that people are all weak, are all victims. Because the Marxist view see people as big victims. Okay? So it stresses cultural pluralism and egalitarianism. This means that they acknowledge okay, that different culture, different people have different exp experiences. So developed audience reception research as a way of understanding media influence. Uh, they create their own map methods okay how audience receive remember we talk about culture, uh, critical theories okay they usually use qualitative and they also use um, basically macro approach okay they just do some kind of uh, assumptions okay so british cultural study tries to be quite scientific right but the weakness is still political but there's no call to action no call to action. They just say, oh, okay, I don't know, different people have different beliefs, they are changing, okay, but not real call to action. They don't ask for real change, okay? They also rely on qualitative research, okay, <clears throat> but not as much as a, a critical theory. And they can overlook subtle, indirect ways that elites control media and audience reception. Basically, okay, here their weaknesses is because they are not uh, decisive enough okay so the those who are Marxist okay they say you know what you're talking about okay yes you're trying to be very uh, what you call it um, populist okay trying to satisfy everybody okay cannot be like that because you have to make a, or take a stand okay if the media influence is bad it's bad right because British cultural studies, yes, for example, like Jenny Stradwee's study I mentioned just now, okay, they identify, yes, women are empowered, but they still do not answer the question of how media companies are still controlling the minds of women who read novels. That the, that the media companies are making a lot of money from women that read romance novels. Okay, so these major questions are not answered by British cultural studies. Okay, so there are other 
related cultural uh, cultural theories okay such as technological determinists okay so this technological determinists believe okay that it is the technology all right the, the person who uh, believes that all social political economic and cultural change is inevitably based on the development and diffusion of techno technology okay so that means those who own the technology those who have the upper hand in using technology okay will have the ability to have some kind of control over the masses over the people all right or, or always will be at the advan advantage okay we always hear statements like oh facebook caused the revolution in the middle east okay the internet changed the uh, political dynamic in malaysia so when people make statements like that they are actually taking a technological determinist approach okay because they believe it is the technology that causes the change okay so why do we consider this part of cultural and critical studies because they are criticizing technology those who own them and they are saying that if the technology maintains the status status quo okay of course there are truth to this as well because for example when we look at new modern uh, new social media for example we talk about facebook we talk about google all right those who own those technology don't they have the power of course they have access to all the information in the world information about everyone in the world right and they have made us be become very dependent okay especially now during this covid-19 pandemic most of us are very much independent on the online technologies okay we learn we study everything we depend on google okay so we are becoming technologically determinist because we assume okay or oh, we can only survive this uh, pandemic or education can only survive through techno technology but in order for us to survive we continue to use google we continue to depend on western technologies we continue to depend on american com companies so during this time they will continue to benefit they will continue to grow bigger and bigger and more power powerful right so technological determinism is also related to the bias of communication okay why because technology is not objective technology is bias what do we mean by technology is bias okay is the idea of inis herald inis okay yeah? because technology Okay, when we talk about social media, for example, it is an American creation. It is a Western creation. Okay, with it comes values. Okay, with it comes some kind of power that benefits. Okay, the uh, Americans or the owner of the techno technology. All right, social media demands us okay to socialize, to share every single thing about our life. Okay, to differentiate between our private and our public life now this is initially not the culture of the east okay not the culture of the muslims all right we are supposed to be very modest all right we do not supposed to share everything but the muslims okay everyone in the world have changed their culture we've become very um what is that word um consumed with ourselves we want to share everything and when we have instagram what do we do we want to parade our images so all of this sarah right, it's not just because okay we are changing naturally it is because the technology that we are using are forcing us or making us be, to become a different type of per person and this is in relation to bias the bias of the techno technology what's the point of having uh, an instagram or a facebook account if you don't share okay if you don't invite friends into your personal life okay so the technology okay in relation to technological determinism has become a global vi global village <clears throat> i'm sure you've heard of this right so the idea of the global village comes from marshall mcluhan mcluhanism okay mcluhanism is is the theory lah all right it's not really the theory it's approach those who take a technological determinist approach in media and communication are usually called mcluhanists okay because they support the idea of 
Marshall McLuhan. Okay, so Marshall McLuhan said the medium is the message. Okay, because technology is so central, okay, is so important, okay, it is more, uh, what we call it, meaningful than the message. Okay, what does this mean? The medium is the message. It's no longer the content, it's the medium. Okay, McLuhan's idea that new forms of media transform our experience of ourselves and our society. And this influence is ultimately more important than the content of specific math, specific message. So this is what we mean. All right, like I said just now, the bias of the communicate, communication. All right, before Facebook, we were living in a different world. All right. Before television, it was a different world. Did television change society? It definitely did. It's not just about the content, it's the medium. Because television brought visuals, okay? they brought sounds, they brought, uh, what we call it, many different things that were not experienced before. The same thing with social media, social media and the internet. Okay? It allowed people to communicate. Okay, it allowed uh, not it allowed people to socialize okay, to get connected with other people instantaneously. So it is the medium. It is not really the con content. So I can give you a very good example. All right, when you want to break up with your girlfriend or boyfriend, okay, which you should if you're still undergraduate. Okay, I always tell my students why commit yourself so early, enjoy life. Okay. So if you have a boyfriend right now and suddenly you want to break up with him because Madam Shafizan tells you so, okay? So how would you do it? Okay, would you go face to face? Would you just text him? Would you email him? Would you call him via Google Meet? Okay? The medium that you choose to use to break up with your partner, okay, tells a lot about how you feel about that person, isn't it? It is still the message. If you just send a text, say, okay, let's break up. Or you see face to face and explain. It's a different degree of me, meaning, isn't it? Right? It's easier to break up via text. But that would imply that that person was never really important to you. Okay? Or it may hurt that person really a lot. Okay? Being dumped via text. But if you want to do it via face to face, maybe it means it differently because you are able to communicate, you are able to explain. Okay, and it allows the person to give feedback. Okay, maybe, you know, just punch you or something. But that is an opportunity for response. So the message is deep, different. Okay, so there is also the idea of global village. Because now, McLuhan's conception of a new form of social organization emerging as instantaneous electronic media tied the entire world into one great social, political, and cultural system. Okay, that make be through technology, we have become a global village. All right, is this true or not? Okay, do we eat the same thing? Do we watch the same thing? Do we talk about the same thing? All right, when things go viral, all right, it makes everybody talk about the same thing. So we are connected, okay, together via instantaneous electronic media. And this has made us into the same kind of people same kind of people and this can be good and dangerous as well because it's creating a world of one social political and cultural system okay like what okay a global village we understand one another but we must use english okay we dress like one another okay we like the same the same thing so there's the cultural diversity is being affected right and the, another idea of McLuhanism is the extensions of man. McLuhan's idea that media literally extends sight, hearing, and touch through time and space. Uh, this can not be much true, more true than today. The extensions of man. Your smartphone who's, that is much smarter than you is an extension of you. Okay? How is it an extension of you? Because you do it, use it for every aspect of your life. Okay? It wakes you up in the morning. Right? Isn't it? It wakes you up in the morning. Okay, it becomes your alarm. Okay? And then it tells you, okay, you put the azan there. It tells you to pray. Okay? And then you have a fitness app. It tells you to uh, exercise. It tells you you've been consuming too much calories. Okay? It tells you to do this, to do that. Okay? That you cannot survive without your mobile phone. 
okay, that most people today are still okay during this pandemic lockdown because they have their mobile phone. Imagine being locked down for three months without access to internet and mobile phone. Okay, so that may make some people more crazy. Okay, because this technology has become the extensions of men. Just like the invention of smart technologies, you know, smart house, uh, smart homes, smart TV, smart fridge, smart everything. Why is it an extension of men? Because all of these technologies are smart, they can think for themselves and they can do work for us. And they make our lives easier. Okay, so technology is the extension of man. So if you can see here, McLuhan is a technological determinist. Okay, he sees the world, he sees media, everything, and relate it back to how technology is actually the main contributor to change. Okay, so this is Marshall McLuhan, another white man, okay, who says that the medium is the message. This is merely to say, that the personal and social consequences of any media, that is of any extension of ourselves, result from the new scale that is introduced into our affairs by each extension of ourselves or by any new technology. So he's talking about media is the message, he's talking about okay, um, the global village, and he's also talking about the extension of men. Okay. So what are the strengths of McLuhanism? It's comprehensive because it talks about the different components, all right? It talks about technology, social, culture, politics. It's macro, okay? So it resonates, okay? But it resonates mostly with the general public in the 1960s and 70s because this is the time where broadcast media was becoming really powerful. But it still resonates here, especially in this time when we have internet and social media. So it elevates the cultural value of popular media content. Okay, it anticipates a future in which media plays a central role in fostering community. So because as we are living a media-saturated world right now, that is why Matt Lugan is becoming more popular now than he was in the 60s. Because it seems that his prophecy, okay, his prophecies of medium is a message, uh, global village, extension of man, Okay, so the, all these ideas that he came up with in the 60s is being realized now. Okay? So that's why it enjoys longevity as a result of introduction of new electronic media. But the weaknesses is, against critical cultural theory, mostly it's hard to uh, be measured. Okay? And it's optimistic of technology's influence. Sometimes it's not just technology. All right? Because everything is really relative. Okay? It ignores important effects, issues, it calls for non-linear thinking, okay? And it's overly apologetic of electronic media. That means it's very like biased towards techno technology. And it questions the value of literacy and argues of its inevitable decline. So here it actually means okay, that it gives too much emphasis on the power of technology and at the same time undermining okay, the power of the way people are able to uh, interact or control the techno technology. Okay, so critical and cultural theories. Okay, probably this is the my favorite uh, category because um, it espouses certain values. As a Muslim, I think we can't just study things without, you know, inserting our own value or without trying to come up with any call of act, call of action. Okay. So if you understand, okay, I just want to sum it up, okay, through this diagram. You have here Marxist, okay, Karl Marx. He come up with a critical theory, critical theory, okay. But, okay, in academia, okay, in communication especially, when we want to look at this theory, we look at, okay, is it taking the transmission perspective or is it taking the ritual perspectives? How do they see the communication process? If the theory see communication process as direct sender to receiver, okay, then they're taking the transmission perspectives, then that is why they see okay, the problem is that there needs to be revolutionary change. Okay, because the influence is direct. So that's why they take the Marxist approach and they believe in political economy and technological determinism. Very specific. The change is specific. Right, the influence is specific. 
On the other hand, if they see okay, the relationship through a ritual perspective, that communication, that information is transmitted via rituals, that communication is absorbed, okay, meaning is uh, what we call it taken and understood through a ritual perspective, then they are taking a neo Marxist, neo Marxist, okay, culturalist view. Okay, so that's why you have theories like hegemony, okay, or British cultural studies, or okay, we did not discuss this just now, but feminism. Okay, because feminists believe okay, there is a status quo, okay, there is this um, masculine status quo. Okay, and because uh, we uh, culture okay, always privileges the men, women are being discriminated. Okay, so how are women being discriminated? Not just via political economy, but also in their everyday, everyday life. Okay, so I will not discuss this here. Specifically, I will discuss this later in other uh, topics, okay? But what's more important is you can see the overview and understand, okay, the hierarchy of critical and cultural theories. Okay? All right, so two videos on critical and cultural theories. So it's a long, long uh, explanation. But if you can survive, okay, binge-watching Netflix 7 and 8, series in one night okay i believe you can survive this as well okay so that's it good luck thank you till the next video all right assalamualaikum